Ladies and gentlemen, we're back on the GBB 2019 train. Today we got Rhythmine versus Balance. I didn't even have to read it. I memorized it because I've been looking forward to this one, man. Rhythmine is one part of Berry Wham. And Balance, I don't know about anything about balance. So we're just going to dive into this. We're going to like, oh, this accident. No, accidents happen. Oh, I dislike by accident. It's liked. Support Swiss Beatbox. They're, um, you know, damn, the biggest beatbox channel in the world. Congratulations. And support with mine and balance. Always do that without further ado. Like and subscribe here. It helps. Go. Right. Balance versus Rhythmine. We're back at the 2019 Grand Beatbox Battle. If you guys are ready for the next battle, give me a yeah. yeah. Oh, there's, they have a, they, they're sponsored by Vochlea. I didn't know that. That's that odd. That's that software. You can just do like, and it creates like a. Oh well, beatboxers can do it themselves, but you use your voice to create music. You guys ready for the next battle? Give me a yeah! yeah. I say the three, y'all say the two and the one. It's on balance in three. It already sounds dope. The. Uh, Equalizer. What is that? Fast. Efficient. Efficient. Anything I do, they do too. Be like people want to be like you. Anything I do, they do too. They do too. They do too. It's like what you see. It's a bit off the beat. from the UK. that they threw in the air that was that wasn't a bra right it's the duck okay sometimes i saw this in another B, a gbb video i saw something flying and I, I caught it it was i think it's the same is that a flamingo what is that a flamingo blow up flamingo but it, from if you catch it quickly it, it looks like a bra because i'm when you look at these concerts you know usually it's like bras being thrown and stuff like that that'd be that'd be crazy if somebody threw their bra it's a guy. That'd be crazy. A cry. A guy throwing a bra. That'd be awesome. Complete switch. Wasn't expecting that. Very nice. Very nice. That, that's that ending. That was a that was a solid Sorry. ending. Solid. Solid. Ballad's ripping it up. All right. Round one. It's on rhythm. Y'all know what to do. I say the toi. You say the turn the uh. crowd. Toi.
That room. <laughs> sound reminds me of something. I don't know if they did this intentionally, but this symbol, I don't know if it's the same for you guys. That's like getting, get fucked. Something like that. It's like you get fucked. So he, the fact that he did that, I mean, in Belgium, we used to do that all the time. Like, <laughs> it's funny to see that. Shit. It's something like that, man. If I remember correctly, it could be something else, but it's not a, it's not a good thing when you do that, like to somebody else. So it's just for me seeing him do that. was hilarious. It's hilarious. That's awesome. That's awesome. dominating he's dominating bro he's dominating right now he's he, he killing it he's killing it still have a minute that t-shirt is fire Fire, bro, that's a that sounds so good. It's dirty. Yo, if you if you can if you can get Beardy Man to make the stank face, you know he did a good job because Beardy Man was king of the stank face music, bro. If you could get Beardy Man to look like that, because some of the some of Beardy Man's stuff, man. In the, what is it called? In the underbelly? I remember watching some of his stuff. He did like a uh, hall. What was it? Stevie Wonder type of dubstep stuff. And, and man, it's just bad. Dope. Dope. And the thing is, what I also want to say is everything he did sounded great and not just like it sounded clean. Yes, it did. But the, the singing was polished. The singing was nice. I didn't hear flaws in it. As with certain other uh, beatboxers you hear on this, uh, I don't remember. I got to listen back if Balance had that, but certain certain singing, certain notes you, you were not hitting. Certain loop uh, artists, when they loop and they sing, I think this was also an issue with beatness. 
not hitting certain notes or it's just a bit too much harmonizing, right? Tyson was an example. It's not hitting certain notes and it just throws you off. If you do hit it in the right range and you're, you're executing it right and then ex combine it with other great elements and it just sounds very polished, you got yourself a great set. And that's exactly what this was, combined with hard drops, man. I mean, yeah, it's... it's just, just from this first round, Rhythmind obviously took it. Ish. 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 We're coming back. It's round two on balance from the UK. He's getting ready to go. All right. I say the three, y'all say the two and the one. In three! I mean, it is, it is solid. Oh, let me turn it off. It is solid and it sounds good, but it's just not hitting as hard as Rhythmine's round. Like, that was hitting. I think he knows. Balance from the UK. He knows. Well, that's round the battle. Let's go on to rhythm. You already know what to do. I say the twa. You say the two and the uh. Pull it. Twa. You know, there's a certain thing that happens. Um, because I was, I was in a beatbox battle in Belgium long ago. I was 12 or 13 years old. And I entered 
not expecting anything. I just entered and I thought, ah, I'm going to do an elimination just for fun. I made it to the finals and I made it battling one of the people I look up to. And one of the reasons I started beatboxing, which and his name was Copycat, but he changed his name to Nasty Cat. He's one of Belgian's like OG beatboxers uh, alongside Roxer Loops and Fatty K, for example. Shout out to Fatty K. Uh, I talk to him sometimes. He's a radio, he's a DJ host, uh, a radio host in, in Belgium now. And I remember going against copy. I, I, every battle I had, I was confident. And I was like, you got to imagine, I was 12 or 13. Like I was a kid. Every battle I did, which is quarterfinals, semifinals, and I won, I was very confident. Even though my opponent was like, 20 something, 30 years old, and they were a certain sounds were cleaner, they were more polished. I was still confident and I, I won. However, in the finals, I wasn't as confident because I, for one thing, I ran out of material. And second thing, what really struck me, what like hit the motivation is when my opponent in the finals did their first round and it was already like, okay, he's got it in the pocket. And that demotivated my second round to where my second round, I'd already accepted my fate. And I see this happen too. I don't know if this is the case, but I've seen this happen now with balance. And I've seen this happen with beatness in the previous one we watched. I don't know if that is the case, but that's what I'm seeing. That's from my perspective. To really know the answer to that, I'll have to, I'd have to ask them. Uh, personally, to really know that. So this is just speculation. This is my thought process behind it. But I can tell you from experience, there is something that happens whenever you go against an opponent in a battle and they hit you with like an insane route and the crowd is going wild. It demotivates you for like, damn. Like you, in your mind, you're already lost, right? I did go out with a battle, but then again, I lost in the final. But I, and I can see this happening. It's, it, it, the mood switches completely. And you can hear that in the second round. Yeah. No. Is I mean, never accept defeat. Yeah, sure. But it, there, it's just being realistic. When you go against somebody with a first round like Soso or a first round like Rhythmind, you know. Because you have to be realistic and look at the decision from the judges. Just from if, if you lost the first round, it'll be very hard to recover the second round. And if you recover the second round and win the second round, it's a draw. And it'll have to go into like overtime. I don't know if they do that here, but right. So it's already, you're already, uh, you're already behind. And you don't want to be behind in these, be behind in these battles. And if you, if you hear the first round of one of, of, of like Soso or Rhythmind, because this is the example I'm using, right? You can already expect their second round is going to be crazy too. If that's their first round, you can expect their second round is going to be crazy too. So it, it demotivates you to a certain point. Yeah, I agree. Still give it your best. But there is something realistic as humans. We realize just being realistic, we might have lost here. But we can still battle. I get what you mean. I just had to mention that. Sometimes you lose the battle. And that's the way, that's life, bro. Sometimes you lose the battle. Be 
back. It happens. Was it intentional? Was that feedback intentional? Did he use the feedback as a sound? No way. Wait, hold up. No way. Wait, wait, wait. No, he recorded it after it. I thought he I thought he used feedback as a sound. He was like rolling with it, like screw it, let's use it. Something nasty is about to drop. I can I can feel it. He's the rhythm mind is nasty. He's very dope. reacting to this this is cold that drop is nasty crowd's dead man Beardy has stank face. That that beat is nasty. That's dirty. You know, Beardy is a stank face master, bro. And and Rhythmind. Ooh. Even Sam Perry was like, yo, he killed that man. Man, I'm having a great time. Rhythmind, balance. Hey, and, and, and I love love the balance too, bro. Like, yeah, he showed up. Just showing up to the battle is just imme immediate maximum respect. Whenever they just show up to a battle, like just the, being on stage there in front of the crowd battling, it is uh, it takes balls, man. It takes courage, it takes courage to do that. So respect for anybody who steps into the beatbox ring, man. Go check out the original artist and Swiss beatbox gang. <laughs>